Hi guys. So I uh, explained in class last week how to do this, but apparently it didn't stick because I have a bunch of people who now seem very confused. So let's do it again. Um, first of all, I have some of the data files here in, in the local directory of my notebook. So I'll just say ls star.csv. Those are the ones that are in this directory. So I can load one of these guys up. Um, I'll say the data frame is equal to uh, pandas.readcsv, and then um, I'll just pick one of these files, right? And then I'll just say df.plot, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so um, I've got, this is the time, the time just increases linearly. The, this is the angle, the angle is in degrees, right? And it's, um, here's where the, this is getting the experiment set up, and this is where we actually collected some data. So we can go from like 500 to maybe uh, 900 or something like that. So let's, let's see how that looks. So if I say df 500 to 900, and then uh, we'll say plot, that gives me some nice data. Um, I could... Uh, let's say, say df dot, no, um, how about this? We'll say um, good five degree equals that. So then I can just say pl dot plot good five degree data. And then um, I think time. Mm. Good five degree data dot time, and then good five degree data dot angle. We'll plot that. Okay, so now I've got time here and angle, so that's all looking good. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, try to fit that. So what should my model look like? I'll have a model. It's going to have time. It's going to have amplitude. It's going to have angular frequency. It's going to have phase. And it's going to have an offset. OK? And all I'll return is uh, a times np dot sine of omega times time plus the phase plus the offset, okay? That'll be the model. Now we wanna do the fit. So part of the trick is um, when you're doing a fit is you, you gotta give it a hint about where to, where to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a grid here and uh, we'll estimate the, it looks like the amplitude is about six in this case, a little more than five degrees. Even though it was advertised to be a five degrees, it looks like it's closer to six degrees. What about the period? I'd say the period is from 21 to 23. That's about two seconds of period, a little less than two seconds. <clears throat> so let's initialize the parameters. Um, A0, my estimated A, is going to be about 6. Um, omega 0, that's my estimated omega, just ballpark. It's going to be 2 times pi divided by, um, let's call it 1.8, because I think it's less than two seconds. Um, what else do I need? Phi, I don't really care about. Offset, I don't really care about. I'm going to assume those are roughly zero. I think the fitter will find those. So the parameters and the covariance matrix are going to be the curve fit of my model. And then I've got to pass in. Um, the good five degree data time, the good five degree data angle, and I'm gonna pass in my initial guesses for the parameters, which will be a zero, omega zero, zero, and zero. And then the other thing I should probably do is to get some sense of the uncertainty in the y values. Um, wow. It looks like, well, I happen to know the wheels 
of this encoder, there's a thousand teeth in 360 degrees. So let's say um, d theta, that's my error and my angle, is going to be um, 360, 360 degrees divided by a thousand teeth. <clears throat> How's that sound? So I'll say sigma is equal to um, NP ones, uh, and the size of the array is going to be the length of df dot no good dot time. So it's the size of that array basically times d theta. So I'm making an array of ones. NP ones is an array of ones. The size of the array is the length of the time data, and the values that I'm going to multiply by are the error in the angle. So sigma is an array of errors in angle. So I'll say sigma equals sig. And that will enable me to get a sensible value of the uncertainty. So let's, uh, okay. So let's see what the parameters look like. So it looks like the amplitude was 6.03. Omega is 3.46. So, uh, and then the phase and the offset the offset's small, the phase, I don't really care about it, it doesn't really affect, uh, all I'm after right now is the amplitude and the period. So um, I can say that A comma omega comma phi comma offset are equal to the parameters dA, d omega, d phi, and d offset are equal to, remember, it's the square root of the diagonal elements of the covariance matrix. Okay, and then uh, I'll just print out A equals, and then we'll say um, percent, what, 5.3F plus or minus percent 5.3F, and then I'll just give that A and DA, see how that works, okay. So that gives me the uncertainty in A and A itself. And we can do the same thing for omega. Okay, 3.46, and it's got very little uncertainty as well. Um, <clears throat> It'd be nice to plot that. You can see an example in the repository of how you can plot the model against the actual data. Um, but really, it, if, once we get A and omega, of course, what's the period going to be? Um, print T equals percent 5.3 F. What is the period? It's going to be uh, 2 times uh, pi. Come on. and I get a divide by omega. So 1.812, actually I was pretty close with my 1.8. 1.812. What's the error in the time? Well, uh, that's a, the fractional error in omega is the fractional error in the time. So the easiest way to calculate that is to say um, dt is And we just say it's t, actually that's this, and then I'll say times um, mm, d omega over omega. Didn't like that. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's give it a little more precision here. Okay, so it's obviously it seems like it's very precise. Anyway, that's how you do that. You do a curve fit. You get the amplitude, about 6 degrees in this case. You get the period. It's 2 pi divided by omega. Omega comes out of the curve fit. It's the factor of time. Okay, so that's how it works.